Our producer is punishing us with goat today because despite finishing on the losing side in Sunday's World Cup final, Kylian Mbappe, I wonder how many children will be born in the Caribbean named Kylian, added to his impressive resume by becoming only the second player in history to score a hat-trick in the final of a FIFA World Cup. The first, Jeff Hurst for England against West Germany in 1966. Mbappe's stunning hat-trick took his tournament tally to eight, the first player to score that many in a World Cup since Ronaldo for Brazil in 2002. The PSG superstar turns 24 on Tuesday, and we are asking our experts, Simon and Brent, to assess his performance in Qatar and his prospects for the future. Simon, what say you about the brilliant Frenchman? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Uh, and it's such a vital uh, part of the France team, even in games he didn't affect directly. So you think about that game against England where really his production wasn't uh, particularly impressive, but England had to adjust their way they defended um, to deal with him and that allowed opportunities for other players and so on. He's, he, he's, he's got so much. His touch is... Close control in the in the box for somebody who's over six foot is incredible. Um, his speed is remarkable. He's, he's, he's finishing. He's really got so many qualities. It's, it, it's, it's unbelievable. What I'd like to see from him now, though, really, is with all due respect to my French colleagues, I'd like to see him go and play in another league, you know, either Spain or England, and go on and see, you know, See him do it week in, week out, the way that Haaland is doing it now for Manchester City and so on. I'd love to see that from him because we need more of this guy on a global stage than just the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you answered the question about his prospects. Brent, assess for me Mbappe's contribution to this France uh, second-place finish in this World Cup. And based on where he is now, where you expect him to be if he has luck with injuries and stays with the game in the next six, eight, ten years? I think to put some context to, to this conversation is, is understanding that he came in with a, a very depleted French team. And I think his supporting cast wasn't as good as, as, as probably would have been. And I think despite that, he was able to, to start, to shine. Because I was concerned about him a bit because of the supporting cast. Just wasn't as good at, at that he's used to. He was basically asked to be the Lionel Messi for France, to be, to be that guy, to be the star player. Yes, he's done it. Uh, in the last World Cup, but the supporting cast was there to give him that prop, that push. But I think particularly in this World Cup, there was a lot riding on his shoulders. What I was really proud of him, one moment in particular, and I think that sums up his World Cup, was in the finals where he went on to kick, uh, uh, of course, a penalty in uh, the penalty shootout and picked the same side again. He, to me, it showed a player with tremendous confidence. I was on this... Uh, very same zone when I talked about Harry Kane and I didn't think he should take uh, two penalty <laughs> kicks. But here's uh, Kylian Mbappe, of course, going ahead and doing that and more. And I think for that, for me, shows uh, his level of confidence and his ability and his confidence in himself as a player. I think as a his prospect, I'm a little bit concerned because of some of the noise coming out of the camp as it relates to his situation in PSG and the demands that he's having and the type of money he's on, uh, he's on and he's, he's asking for. I have no problem with players being paid well, but I do worry when it seems like money seems to be the driving factor. And I think Simon hit the nail on the head. I'd like to see him move to somewhere else, a different challenge, of course, for him. That may just help his game and, and wind his, his, his skill set and maybe push him to, to even start, and, um, as much as we hate the conversation, go back into that good conversation again. <laughs> uh, Brent, <laughs> you, you were... And an international defender. You played at the World Cup in 2006. You have played high-level football in the USA, Britain, both England and, and Scotland. Um, you are a central defender, and Kylian Mbappe is advancing toward you. What, what are the things that you can do to stop him? Because at the moment, he appears to be probably the most unstoppable forward in international football. I think you see most defenders try facing him up quite early, making sure he doesn't get ahead of steam. Once he gets ahead of steam, it's almost impossible to stop him yes. because one of the things he's very good at is dipping his shoulders left and right and changing course of direction. It's one thing to, to face a player with pace. But when a player starts utilizing that pace with change, change of direction, you're in big trouble. There's absolutely nothing you can do uh, to stop a player like that. So I think to stop Mbappe... I, I see most teams trying to double-team. I don't think that would work. 
and stopping him before he starts to move. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Simon, I know you've watched uh, Kylian Mbappe live. We hear people talk all the time about seeing players on television. It's completely different from seeing them play live. How, how good is Kylian Mbappe? And as George presented earlier on, um, what does the future hold for him? Because at the moment, based on his trajectory, he, he, you know, he's heading for the stars. I think the thing that strikes you most when you see him in a stadium as opposed to on television is just uh, the acceleration. I don't think TV can quite pick that up. He, 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 he can move it past somebody and then he's past the next man uh, before you've even realised it. He, he has tremendous uh, afterburners that he can put on. So I think, I think that side of him, we know he's fast. Obviously, he's fast and you can see that. But when you're there, you do, do pick up a, in, a, in a different way. I, th I think, you know, he, he's the GOAT debate. He, he, he... <laughs> Messi's not going to be around for much longer, is he? Ronaldo is basically not around anymore in, in terms of big European football, it seems. Um, he's he's going to be the top guy in Europe for the next decade. That, that's who he is, unless somebody else comes along, uh, you know, very quickly in the next year or two. He's going to be the guy in European football and, and world football. Um, and that's going to be a big responsibility for him. A huge possibility for him to make a lot of money, of course. And, and let's see how he handles it all. But so far, he seems to take so many challenges in his stride and, and, and responsibility on his shoulders that we saw with those penalty kicks where he backs himself to do it. I, I'm hugely impressed by him, and I think uh, I think we've got many years of, of watching a very exciting footballer. Last question, Brent. We're running out of time. Based on his skill set, can he evolve from a devastating attacking threat that comes from wide to a devastating attacking threat that plays centrally? In the way that CR7, to his immense credit has reformed his own style of play from tear away winger to devastating centre forward. Does Mbappe have that in his capacity to be that evolved player, you think? I think right now, no. I think within time and experience, maybe yes. Uh, one of the things that Simon harped on is his finishing. I'm really impressed with that side of his game. That's, that's improved a lot. That strike in the final... I don't know if viewers understand how difficult a finish that was. It, was. it is one of the most difficult things to do in football, but he made it look very, very easy. So I would suggest that, yes, he's heading on the right pathway, but I still think there's a lot within uh, the sport that he needs to learn still uh, and move away from just being a speed merchant to, to evolve and develop into something uh, a bit more, uh, of course, uh, expansive, uh, where he can play along the lines, like, like what Christian, Ar Christian Ronaldo did. Yeah, yeah, and, and the same question for you, Simon, because his rival for the mantle of hottest young striker right now, Horland, can play as an out-and-out -out number nine. And we know that as the career gets older, that's where you're going to have to be to get most of your goals because you're not going to feast from wide all your career. Does Mbappe, you think, have that in his capacity to be that evolved number nine deadly finisher? Yeah, I think he can evolve into that for sure. In fact, we saw during the games, including yesterday, that he, he does move more and more into a central sort of number nine position. I think that's where he, he will end up because there's so many good wide attackers these days, aren't there? Every team who's playing that three-man three, three man and formation, they've got a couple of decent, decent wide ones. But to get a top world-class number nine... It's such a valuable thing, and he's got the potential to be that for sure. Hear you on that, unless Pep Guardiola invents some tactics that evolves us away from using any of those <laughs> things any at all. You know, it's not surprising. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure, and uh, yeah, we'll talk again. Cheers. Have a good one, guys. Good, good, good. Break time here on the Sports Minds. I'm back with more after these. Want more content? Follow us on YouTube, subscribe to Sportsmax on cable, and download the Sportsmax app today.